good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers around the world. Hope you're all uh, doing well and being blessed. I'm going to read uh, from the book, There Is No Death, There Is No Death, by um, Sarah Linnell Manette. It's a near-death experience, and uh, my son-in-law gave it to me to read, and I I've never read one of these. Not you know, we we did watch the movie um Heaven is for Real. Interesting. I haven't read the book yet. But uh th this um book was impressive to me and I'm just gonna start with chapter four and I probably would like to read the whole thing. It's kind of rough. This woman had a very, very, very rough life. Um abused and just a lot of bad things happened to her to the point where she uh, tried to commit suicide and did die for a while and supposedly had this near-death experience so she, uh, the, t the chapters are titled uh, My Life Before and that chapter is very long and very um, detailed it's about, well, it's about 25 pages 23 pages uh, very rough and then she sees uh, what she calls the World of Spirits, Chapter 2. That's about 25 pages. Uh, chapter 3 is called I Visit Hell. And that's only like four or five pages. And I don't want to start with that one just because it's strange also. But Chapter 4, I See the Future, is from page 61 to uh, 72. And I'm going to read that. The reason I'm going to read it is because it, it uh, what she saw in the future in the United States here, uh, everything that she saw exactly corroborates what I see coming down. And not that I've had a vision or anything like that, but I, I just assess things from a historical perspective, um, languages, history, geography, geology, everything else. And this, there's a passage in here, I'll get to it, where she could have mentioned, she could have said the Ozark Plateau, and I've talked about this before, but I'm going to read it. If I've read it before, I'm sorry. My uh, connection's down, and I don't, I can't do any uh, other internet things. And I've got a window of opportunity here to do some recording, so I wanted to get this down. I see the future. I see many events that will soon happen in the world. As I turned away from the black surroundings, a small light started to shine in front of me. The darkness, sounds, and feelings that had so completely oppressed me started to fade into the background. The light grew bigger, and a window opened up much the same as when I witnessed my life's review. This time, however, a panoramic view of the entire earth lay before me. It came closer and closer as if I had been out in space and was flying toward it. I knew that what was happening was intended to help me make my decision about going back to earth. A part of me wanted to go back to the beautiful spirit world or paradise. Another part of me felt the need to be reunited with my body so I could change my life. It was a tug of war, and what I was about to see was to help me understand what I would be going through if I chose to go back into my body of clay. Again, the view before me played out like a video in fast forward motion, and yet I could see the scene in perfect clarity and was able to comprehend everything that transpired. <clears throat> Sorry. As the earth zoomed up into my view, I first saw the whole world and then the various countries. I was, it was made clear to me that in the future there would be wars and calamities, including nuclear attacks in various places in the world. A view of how it would start was given. Israel is attacked. A world war begins. I am not familiar with the geography of the world, but as I looked at the various lands, I instinctively knew what countries they were. Looking at the Middle East, I watched as a missile flew from Libya and hit Israel. The mushroom cloud that resulted from the blast was visible, and I knew that the missile contained a nucle nuclear bomb. I was aware that those responsible for the missile were Iranian, but the missile had been hidden and fired from within the borders of Libya. Oh, 
Almost immediately, other missiles began flying from one country to another, quickly spreading war around the world. I also saw that many nuclear explosions did not come from missiles but from bombs of some kind on the ground. My focus then changed from the Middle East to the United States and I understood that I was about to see some of the things that would lead up to the nuclear holocaust that I had just witnessed. Tall buildings in New York fell. fall. As I looked upon the continent of Amer North America, I zeroed in on the East Coast and then on New York specifically. I saw New York City with all of its people and buildings. Then I saw some tall buildings crashing to the earth, surrounded by tremendous billows of smoke, dust, and debris. I zoomed in closer into the smoke and particles falling and saw a woman holding a little girl's hand and running from the crashing buildings. The woman had long dark hair hanging past her shoulders and curled inward slightly. She wore a beige business suit, heels of a slightly darker, darker color, perhaps tan, and she was not wearing glasses. The little girl appeared to be six or seven years old with short brown hair, reaching below the chin and cut in a type of page boy look. They ran together, holding hands and trying to escape from the falling buildings. As they ran through head the heavy smoke and dust, they were forced to let go of their hands and became separated. The child was terrified, and I could hear her screaming, Mommy, Mommy, over and over again. <coughs> I don't know their outcome, if they lived or died, but I can still see the face of the woman clearly and could easily identify her from a photo or describe her to a sketch artist. I wondered if an earthquake had caused the buildings to fall and felt impressed that the answer was no. However, I was not given any indication as to the cause of the destruction. As I watched the attack on the World Trade Center towers on September 11, 2001, it was like watching a rerun. Commerce seizes. The next thing that came to me was more felt than seen. It was the understanding that shortly before the crashing of the buildings in New York City, commerce ceased. Shopping and buying seemed to stop, and the economy failed throughout the world. Few had any money at all, and those who did have it could not buy anything. Gold and silver and other commodities had value and could be traded. However, as time passed, precious metals and other items of value, such as jewels, became worthless. Four cities attacked with disease. I then saw a man walk into the middle of a crowd of people and drop what seemed like a quart jar full of liquid. The jar broke and the liquid spread. I understood that people nearby had become infected with a disease from the liquid and they didn't even know it. A day or two later people became sick and started dying. I saw that this would happen in four particular cities. New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco and Salt Lake City. The disease started with white blisters, some of the size of a dime, appearing on the hands, arms, and face of the victims. The blisters quickly spread, developed into white sores, apparently filled with pus. Those with the disease would stumble around for weeks and fall over dead. I also saw other people with a flu-like virus that spread more quickly than the first disease. The victims had blood coming from their nose, mouth, eyes, and ears. These people died even faster of this disease than the ones who had the first sickness. <clears throat> These diseases became widespread across the United States with hundreds of thousands infected. Many died within a short time, perhaps 24 hours. Marauding gangs and chaos. As the people were fleeing the cities in the hope of saving their lives, gangs were attacking and killing them. In the towns that were struck with disease, there was chaos with looting, rioting, and murders involved. A complete breakdown of society. Many people seemed to go crazy. I sensed that the electricity had felt everywhere and that nothing was operating throughout the country, including any of the communication systems. I watched people throw rocks through windows to steal TVs that would not work and thought it very strange. While I watched this all happening in the United States, my view instantly jumped back to the Middle East, and I saw the same plagues transpiring in Israel. The same sores and the types of sickness and disease that were occurring in the United States had also been unleashed there. <clears throat> the long winter and famine. The switch in view only lasted an instant, and I was back into the United States. A tremendously long winter had caught everyone by surprise following the siege of sickness. It started early and lasted into the summer months. A famine 
had begun over the few years leading up to the long winter because of storms, droughts, floods, and other plagues that had taken place. And the abnormally long cold period seemed to cause the famine to suddenly increase to its full measure. Not long after this period of time following the diseases and long winter, events began quickly occurring in sequence, one right after the other. My sense of timing was not very clear at this moment because I was seeing several things happen all at the same time or very close together. During and after the long winter the disease spread in every city and increased in severity. The economy and the electricity were completely gone. Chaos and anarchy reigned over the entire country because without any governmental structure there was total, a total breakdown. I saw people's hearts fail them from fear. Almost everyone was searching in a desperate attempt to find some food. There was an extreme shortage everywhere, but in some areas there was no food at all. In these places I could see people so hungry they were digging in the ground for worms. Deadly water. Also during this time I became aware that there was very little drinking water and that the remaining water had been become contaminated. If a person drank it, they would contact the disease and die. Because of their great thirst, many people drank the water in spite of the danger of poisoning. I mentioned earlier about the gangs that killed people trying to escape the cities. It seemed that some of them had lost their minds and went around in these gangs killing people just for the sake of killing. Others did so for food or to gain some material possessions from their victims. Those who were killing for no reason were like beasts, animals completely out of control as they raped, looted, burned, and butchered people. I saw these gangs go into the houses of those who were hiding. They would drag them out of their hiding places and commit unspeakable horrors. An unnatural fear and hatred came over many people. Some family ties that once existed between husbands and wives and parents and children no longer mattered. They only cared about individual survival. Men would kill their wives and children for food or water. Mothers would kill their children. The events that then lay before me were horrible beyond description and almost unbearable to watch. Cities of light and safety. The air everywhere seemed to be filled with smoke as many buildings and cities burned with no one attempting to control the fires. As I looked upon this scene of chaos, smoke and destruction, I noticed that there were small pockets of light scattered over the United States, perhaps twenty or thirty of them. I noticed that most of the locations of light were in the western part of the United States, with only three or four of them being in the east. These places of light seemed to shine brightly through the darkness and were such a contrast to the rest of the scene that they caught my full attention. I focused on them for a moment and asked, what is this light? I was then able to see that these points of light were people who had gathered together and were kneeling in prayer. The light was actually coming from the people and I understood that it was showing forth their goodness and love for each other. They had gathered together for safety and contrary to what I had witnessed elsewhere, were caring more for each other than for themselves. Some of the groups were small with only a hundred people or so. Other groups consisted of what seemed to be thousands. I realized that many, if not all of these places of light or cities of light as I began to think of them, had somehow been established just before most of the devastations and that they were very organized. It was as if they had known what was coming and had prepared for it. I did not see who or what had organized them, but I did see many people struggling to reach them with nothing but what they could carry. In contrast to the outside areas, these cities of light had food that was readily shared with those who joined them. In these places there was relative peace and safety. The inhabitants were living in tents of all kinds, many of which were no more than blankets held up by poles. I noticed that the gangs made no threats on these groups and left them completely alone. Choosing to pick on easier targets and unprotected people. Many were attacked who were trying to reach these cities. However, the people within had defenses and God was with them. I realized that these cities of light were temporary. 
comment later. And that in a short time, the people living within them would go to another place. I do not know where they were to go, but seem to think that they were to gather in the mountains to higher places. The nuclear attack on the United States. While viewing the cities of light, my focus changed and I became aware of missiles being launched and hitting United States cities. I watched as mushroom clouds started forming over many areas of the states. Some of the clouds came from missiles that I knew were fired from Russia and others were not from missiles at all but from bombs that were already within the country. These latter bombs had been hidden in trucks and cars and were driven to certain locations and then detonated. I specifically saw Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and New York City hit with bombs. New York was hit with a missile, but I think Los Angeles was hit by at least one truck bomb, if not several, because I did not see any missile. I also saw a small mushroom cloud from north of Salt Lake City without the aid of a missile. In the darkness, I also saw fireballs falling from the sky. This took place after the mushroom clouds. The balls fell from the sky were of different sizes, most being the size of golf balls, and were very hot. There were millions of them. As they fell from the sky, they left streaks of flame and smoke behind them. Everything they touched started on fire. People, buildings, trees, and grass. Everything burned. I didn't ask what they were or where they had come from because by this time I was sick over the scene before me. From here on I observed without asking many questions. North America invaded. At almost the same time and in the same locations as the mushroom clouds I saw Russian and Chinese troops invading the United States. The Russians were parachuting into many spots along the eastern coast. I also saw them parachuting into Utah. Chinese troops were invading from the west coast near Los Angeles. They were met with resistance from those who had survived the disease and bombs. I did not see any United States military there at the time at that time. This invasion was part of the nuclear war that I had seen earlier and I knew that similar events were taking place all over the world as I had seen previously. I did not see much of this war, but was impressed that it was short in duration and that the Russian and Chinese armies were defeated and withdrew. No explanation regarding how or why was received. The earth cleanses itself. Now the smoke became very heavy, dark, and thick. Just as things appeared to be as bad as they could get, the earth began to quake. <clears throat> this occurred during a winter, seemingly the winter that followed the very long one I had seen earlier. The chaos had existed for almost a full year by this time. The earthquakes began in the west, around Idaho and Wyoming, and then quickly spread in every direction. <coughs> I saw a huge earthquake hit Utah and then California. Earthquakes happened all over California, but they were especially devastating in the Los Angeles and San Francisco areas. San Francisco appeared turned upside down. The multiple earthquakes triggered volcanoes all over the west, and they started spewing a tremendous amount of ash and smoke into the air, causing it to become very dark and dirty and to block much of what was left of the sunlight. Huge waves of water spread over the west coast. As I saw them, I realized that the same destruction was happening to coastal cities all over the world. The waves were so huge that Los Angeles was nearly swept away. I saw a wall of water taller than some of the buildings, perhaps as high as 15 or 20 feet, sweep through Salt Lake City. Hmm. Missed that the first time. I thought this strange because of its location so far from an ocean. I wondered how a wave could travel all the way to Salt Lake City. I was impressed that the wave had not originated at the ocean, but was from underground. I quickly noticed great cracks in the earth around Salt Lake City open up and saw water shooting up out of the ground. I felt that deep under the ground there was a huge amount of water and that the earthquakes had forced it up to the surface. 
Most of the buildings were swept away or destroyed when the water swept over the city. In fact, there is a tremendous destruction with only a few buildings left standing. The water coming from underground stretched from Idaho down to near Cedar City, Utah, and was very destructive. As I looked, I could see that cities all over the country had been devastated, and rubble was everywhere. Most of the buildings were destroyed. However, I realized that even though there was tremendous destruction from earthquakes, disease, floods, volcanoes, and tidal waves, the majority of deaths were caused by the gangs of roving marauders that killed merely for pleasure. <clears throat> As I studied this scene for a moment, the thought occurred to me that the earth itself had become sickened at the terrible acts of cruelty that were happening upon it and was finally reacting through these natural disasters. The earth was attempting to cleanse itself of the chaos and evil that engulfed the people. The ash and smoke from the volcanoes had increased and now almost complete darkness was everywhere upon the earth. The diseases also increased in devastation and I saw people literally dying on their feet. I saw another particular disease that started with red blotches. The victims would quickly start to bleed from every opening in their bodies and then literally disintegrate or melt into unrecognizable masses of flesh and bone. The sight was horrendous because carnage and death were everywhere. After the second terrible scene, I saw the survivors gather up the dead into huge piles to burn them. The stench was sickening. Some of the bodies had been burned during the time of chaos, but because people were more concerned with their survival, they had mostly ignored the dead around them. Four more events. Cool. I then saw four additional events occur. One of these was a huge earthquake which occurred in the middle of the United States. It was tremendous and seemed to split the United States in half about where the Mississippi River is. The crack in the earth that resulted was huge, miles wide, and as it opened up, the earth seemed to swallow everything. Water flowed in from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes did not exist any longer, however, because they became part of a large inland sea. <clears throat> Another event was a series of tremendous earthquakes all over the world. One in particular was a large worldwide quake that caused huge walls of water to sweep over all of the coastal regions. This earthquake and the walls of water made the earlier ones seem small by comparison. I am not sure if the earthquake that split the United States in two was a part of this worldwide quake or not. I also saw a mighty wind come upon the earth. As the wind hit, I saw people go into caves and into the cracks of rocks and underground to try to escape its fury. It seemed to be stronger than any hurricane or tornado. It seemed that everything that had been left was now blown away. I understood without asking that the great worldwide earthquake and the mighty wind were somehow caused by a huge planet-like object that had come very close to the earth and had disrupted everything. It was also made clear to me that it was very near the end when this happened. Now my perspective changed. <coughs> Pardon me. I once again viewed the entire earth from a distance. I saw a huge fireball, much bigger than the earth, approaching our planet. It was extremely bright red and gold in color and engulfed the whole earth. When I witnessed this event I could not help but feel the difference between it and everything else that had occurred. I was impressed that it was the burning of the earth that is described in the Bible. I understood that just before the fireball's appearance Jesus had appeared and the good people I had seen earlier had gone with him and were no longer upon the earth. The few people left behind were those wicked individuals who had survived the earlier plagues and judgments. The picture of the earth engulfed by this huge ball of red and gold fire slowly faded away into blackness. I realized at that moment that I had to go down and take care of my children so that they could be prepared for these terrible events that were going to happen. Everything that was shown to me came to a close and then I woke up in the hospital. End of chapter 4, I See the Future. Uh, 24 minutes.
I think I'll stop that one and then do a commentary one. Diamond's Log Arc Date 2015-1-26. Alright. Well, as I like to say, you know, this is uh, Jerry Diamond. For what it's worth, if you're listening to this, you are the remnant. You are the remnant. Survive. That's your job. Share. Be unselfish. Be altruistic. Look the word up. I'll talk about it later. You know, with what she's seeing and what I'm seeing, our only chance of everybody that's going to make it, make it, is, you know, if we work together, pull together, be in a, in a sheet, oh, I got a commentary on it later, I'll, I'll just end this here because we're pushing 30 minutes, so if I get started it'll be an hour, I don't want to do that. Thank you for listening, for those of you who do. I'm going to do some posts that are going to be awesome. I'm going to get set up here. Maybe I'll do that today. I can do that. No, I can't. I can't get I can't get my stuff online. All right. I'm going to try to reset the computer. Pasta lasagna. How beater shing. Sayonara. <laughs>